emissions. Uh, emissions are pretty cool. It basically says how many particles it should let out over a certain amount of time. Uh, in this case, I believe it's seconds. I uh, guess uh, the amount of particles emitted per second or distance. I'm just actually going to leave it on uh, time. And I'm going to tell it to emit 100 particles per second. And actually, before I do that, let's go over to the scene view. Let's start up the simulation. And we'll just look at it change. So we switched over to 100. And you notice there's just a lot more particles. Uh, so let's go down. You can switch, switch this between time and distance. I'm just going to leave it on time for these uh, demonstrations. Next, we're going to go into burst. Uh, you can add actually like a, well, a burst of particles. And you can do this simply by clicking on the plus button. Uh, how long do you want in between bursts? I'm going to say, I don't know, I'll say two seconds. And how much of a burst do you want? I'm just going to make it 500. So every two seconds, we're supposed to get a burst of... Oh, so every two seconds, we get a burst of 500 particles, which is probably a little bit hard to see of this particle effect. Well, you can see it there. If you look at it from the side, you'll see it. So every two seconds, we get that burst. Uh, that's pretty much it for that one. Uh, let's move on to uh, shape of emitter. Let me just shrink this one down up here. Uh, we have a bunch of presets now. And if we actually go ahead and, well, look at the first one here, the cone. Uh, well, you can see it. And you can actually drag on these and change some of their basic properties. And there's quite a few in here. If you want a box. I don't think you can do too much with the box. Uh, what else? Whoops. What else do we have in here? Oh, we have a hemisphere. It just changes the size. Uh, but uh, they all have their own little bit of uh, properties for each one. And they're all pretty self-explanatory. And the mesh one's actually pretty cool. Uh, if you have a sword or something like that, you can go ahead. And we don't actually have any meshes in this one. Uh, but like we did before where we had a, like a flaming sword. Uh, this is the option we'll be using when we actually revisit the particle systems uh, in the hack and slash tutorial series for uh, things like flaming weapons and that. Uh, we'll be using mesh. Uh, but I don't have any meshes in this scene, so we'll just keep moving on. And next is the renderer. Now these I think are pretty much all options we had before. I'm still not sure if we can cast shadows and receive shadows from uh, particle effects. Before, we couldn't, even though we had the options. Uh, but considering that spark one we looked at earlier, it was affected by light. At least it uh, seemed to be, so it might, um, might actually work now. And, of course, we have the sorting mode, sorting fudge, uh, and I'm not sure if any of these will have tooltips. You can change your default particle or the material attached to it. Do we have any special materials? We do have a few materials, but it's just using the default. And we'll just go into render mode. I don't think any of these are new. Maybe mesh, I think is the only new one. And material just works like before. Sort mode. Let's open that up. This is new. Uh, you can sort it by oldest, youngest, and by distance. I'm not really sure what the benefit is of sorting. Uh, but you can add a fudge to the sorting. And uh, that's pretty much it for a quick basic overview of the particle system. Except we can now open up the particle editor. And let's just make this a little bit bigger. I'm actually going to go ahead and stop the particles. And let's get back to the particle editor. Well, here, let's open it this way. And you can just get a better look at some of these things in here. Uh, let's pick something uh, with a line. Uh, you can get graphs over here for stuff. And it doesn't seem to want to be giving me anything. Set some gradient colors. Uh, we'll just go with the green. We'll switch this over to a blue. You can click in between to add more. You're probably pretty familiar with these handlebar things from different paint applications. Uh, let's see. You can actually click here to add more particle systems. Uh, there's quite a bit that they've actually added to this. 
Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go over my time load here. But uh, the new particle system looks very intuitive, looks very easy to use. And uh, I can't wait to actually start jumping in and playing around with it. Let's see if we hit simulate. Okay. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>